Please court, counsel. Hi, uh, someone just got shot in the parking lot of uh, the Gable Park 17 in the P1. Okay, sir, I need an address. Uh, 1500 Peter Street Road. I don't know, I just, yes ma'am, I just left because I didn't, uh, I just, I, I heard a loud noise and a ghost screaming and then I passed it at Okay, did uh, you see someone that was shot? Uh, yeah, she had a bullet, she had like a little hole and there was blood coming out of her throat. Ladies and gentlemen, Monday, when you heard that call, you knew nothing about the life Dr. Kinder had. All you knew at that point was that someone was shot. Since Monday, you have come to learn about the except exceptional life of Kinder Hatcher. Now, day before yesterday, her sister Ashley said something that really spoke to me. She said that Kendra strived for excellence in everything she did. I'm a second generation Marine. When I hear words like that, that lets me know the type of person Kendra Hatcher was and the type of life that she tried and was trying to live. Yesterday, we sat through an afternoon long platitudes of who this man is, the great father he is, how it's impacted his family, all of that. At the end of the day, the reason any of us is sitting here or standing here right now is because of him. At the end of the day, any pain that his family is feeling, more importantly, any pain that that family is feeling is because of him. You look at the facts of this case, and you can look starting at the beginning and look at the number of opportunities that he had to say no. That very first time he sat down with Crystal and Brenda, he could have said no. That very first time he sat in a car with them and stalked Kendra Hatcher and watched her go about her day-to-day -day affairs, he could have said no. That morning, when he got in that Jeep and drove to follow her, he could have said no. That evening, as they pulled into that parking garage and sat and waited for her to drive in, watch her drive in, he could right then and there say nothing. But he didn't. And because of his choices, all of you are here and everyone else in this courtroom is here because of that man and that man alone. Now, yesterday they brought in a number of jailers to talk about the model inmate that Chris Merlo is. You know what? They bring in 50 more. I don't care. Because this was not a crime of spontaneity. This was planned. This was mapped out. This was discussed. That alone points to the fact that this man is and always will be a future danger to society. If you have an individual who is willing to walk up to a total stranger and put a bullet in the back of their head for compensation, he is always a future danger. If you put this man in general population, he becomes the go-to guy for somebody that wants something done as long as they can provide compensation that is valuable to him. He is always a future danger. The special issues one and two are going to be presented to you. And I'm going to allow Mr. Lord to explain to you how they even, he's even more tied into that. But Christopher Love is a danger. You heard testimony about him being a father. He's a great father, really. The world I come from, a great father, a great parent, teaches and leads by example. 
What example is this man teaching and leading his children to? A great father is present. A great father doesn't go out and engage in criminal activities that expose him to being removed from his children's lives. That's what a great parent does. And that's something that this exceptional person will never have the opportunity to do because of him.